Hey everyone, welcome back to our next segment on energy and um, how energy works within matter. So we're gonna get started by talking about a couple of different forms of energy. First, we have potential energy. Potential energy is your stored energy. This is the type of work that is done in lifting objects to a position. So look at the picture on the right. We are sitting on the top of a roller coaster, just anticipating that ride going down. We are at potential energy. We have the potential to release that energy, but it's currently stored up inside of us. We're not releasing that energy yet. In food, potential energy is in the form of chemical um, potential energy called calories or kilocalories. And we'll talk about calories here in the next couple of slides. Then we have our kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is moving energy. So when we start going down from the top of that roller coaster and we, we're making momentum and movement, that is kinetic energy. The faster an object moves, the more kinetic energy it has. Atoms and molecules and objects are always in motion and therefore have kinetic energy. Energy constantly changes back and forth from potential to kinetic and back again. Potential and kinetic energy can be described as external or internal. External energy is energy that's applied to an object by another source, whereas internal is the energy within an object or um, substance. Food contains internal potential energy as the fuel for the body is stored in every piece of every piece of food. The chips that you eat in your nachos bel grande or your nachos box, those are carbohydrates, and those are going to be used to store um, energy for you so that when you're running or when you're doing an activity later, that chip or that specific food that you ate is going to release the carbohydrate and it's going to provide you with that energy that you need to keep on going. Energy is versatile and can change from one form to another. We have mechanical, chemical, electrical, nuclear, and radiant. Okay, so these are all different forms of energy that we're going to talk about here today. Mechanical energy is the total kinetic and potential energy of a system. This form of energy is used by the body whenever it moves, equipment during food processing, and things like mixers, blenders, and food processors convert electrical energy to mechanical energy that prefer, performs work on food. So when you go wake up in the morning and you make your smoothie with your bananas and your strawberries and your yogurt and anything else that you put in there, you are converting, you're plugging that blender in for electrical energy, and it's converting to a mechanical engine energy to process your food and make it into a delicious, yummy smoothie for you to be stored in your body to be released in the form of energy so you can sustain yourself throughout the day. Chemical energy, on the other hand, is generated when bonds between atoms are formed or broken during chemical reactions. There's two types of reactions I want you to know about, endothermic and exothermic. Endothermic reactions absorb or stores energy and lowers the temperature. Exothermic reactions, on the other hand, release energy and increases the temperature. Metabolism allows the body to utilize chemical energy from food, and this is the result of chemical energy within our bodies. Electrical energy, on the other hand, is produced by the movement of electrons, and this energy form is efficiently converted into mechanical or radiant energy for food processing and transported through materials that are good conductors, such as copper, silver, and other metals. So electrical energy is something that's pretty common in the kitchen and not necessarily within each of us because we're not eating electricity hopefully, um, but it's important to know, especially when we're talking about working in the kitchen. Nuclear energy is the result of splitting or combining atoms of certain elements which give off radiation. This can be used in medicine for taking x-rays, so if you've ever gotten imagery done for your x-rays at the doctor or the dentist, these are all forms of nuclear energy. In food preservation, such as irradiation, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the semester when we get to our biotechnology and processing unit, and lastly, by nuclear power plants to generate electricity to keep our restaurants and homes up and running. Radiant energy, on the other hand, is energy transmitted in the form of waves through space or some other form of media. A lot of cooking appliances utilize radiant energy, which we'll talk about here on the next couple of slides. When radiant energy is visible, it is called light. Okay, we can sometimes refer to this as the electromagnetic spectrum. We talked about this a little bit uh, earlier in the semester. We're not going to worry too much about it in this class, but if you take chemistry in the future, it's going to be important to know that electromagnetic spectrum and light go together, and those are terms to be associated with one another. Now, this morning, you have probably utilized a microwave oven or a cooktop at some point, whether that was cooking your breakfast or maybe heating something up for lunch, but a microwave oven simply converts electrical energy into radiant energy. Okay, because we're plugging in our microwave oven to the outlet, that is electrical energy, and we're heating the food up, and that is a form of radiant energy. 
The electron tube or magnetron converts electrical energy into low frequency electromagnetic waves of radiant energy called microwaves. And that is what heats up our food. Interior surfaces reflect the microwaves toward the food and heat it up and gives off heat. Induction cooktops, on the other hand, use electromagnetic waves to generate heat during cooking. Different types of pans with metals that react to a magnetic field produce the electric current needed to cook foods. So this kind of compares and contrasts the different types of energy um, that is utilized within our kitchens and within our bodies. If you have any questions, feel free to rewind and rewatch or always reach out if you have any questions. Thanks, you guys.